Now it's time to do finance, but this time with our calculator to cheat. So we have a trick. Uh, by the way, this is one of the few things <laughs> it actually makes me laugh so much. Things I studied, things on the exam. <laughs> As I sort of get to more of that stage. All right, so uh, we have a trick for our calculator. It depends on the calculator that you use. If you use the TI Inspire, I think uh, we have a trick like this right here. We go to Calculator and Menu and Finance and go to the Finance Solver. If you have the 84, it's an app. Uh, I can't remember. I think it's called TVM Solver. It's something around finance, something like that. Um, and if you have a Casio or other one, uh, just take a look and see. But they they have finance solvers for you, so we can cheat. So let me just walk you through at least how it works on uh, these two because these are at least the, the variables that they give. And this is very, very important because we have to see where it's different. Remember before we had that equation. So remember we had the equation that went, uh, remember we had an equation for it, it went FV equals, equals PV, we had it go one plus K, whoops. One plus what was an R over 100k to the power of kn. Remember we had an equation for that. Remember that n, n was the number of years. That was what n was. This right here, this capital N is not the number of years. It's the number of payments. This is really important, okay? So it's not number of years. This is important because it's different from the equation. So really watch out for this. This is really important, okay? So this one here, not the number of years. All right, interest rate is a percent. That's fine. It's just like what we've seen before. PV is present value. How much is it worth now? We've got future value, which is uh, what we've learned before. Now payments, what are those? Well, it all depends if you are making payments. So if no payments, obviously you set it to zero. If you are making payments, then you put in what you're doing. These are like regular, maybe monthly payments or yearly payments or who knows what. In this simple examples here, I'm going to start showing you we're going to have no payments, but I'll show you some uh, in another video what happens when we do have regular payments. And that'll be the most useful because it's how things really work. Then we've got PPY payments per year. I like that the payments per year and compounding per year. So I've got a few sort of pro tips for you here. This one here, first of all, if you don't know what to do here, because sometimes it doesn't make sense. Like if you're making no payments, it still needs you to put in something. Okay, so if unsure, make both the same. I'll explain that in a second here. So if it doesn't make sense that you have any payments, just make both of these values here the same, you'll be fine. Remember, this is not years. And what's really interesting is very often one needs to be negative. So in case it ever gives you an error or something like that, I always just try to put what makes sense. But if ever you need to, it gives you an error, then just make one, either PV or FV, make one of them negative. So that's a little bit sort of weird, a little bit finicky that it does that. And what you do is you press enter on the one that you want to solve. If you're on the TI Inspire, if you're on the 84, I think what you do is uh, you press this little solve button on your calculator, a little green. I think I remember being green. You press solve and away you go. Let me show you then. If you saw the last video, we're going to do the same example. By the way, this makes me laugh. Square root of answer instead of bands. This, every time I see someone in bands, I think, hey, square root of answer. All right. So if we want to be a millionaire, we want to do the same situation here. Okay, we want uh, same as before. Let's actually do it with all these variables here. And actually, let me just be lazy. I'll see if I can just grab this. Can I just grab this? Copy, because I'm feeling lazy. I'm going to click this. I'm going to do paste. There we go. So that's well, because my writing's not that nice. So if I want the number of payments, let's actually think carefully about what I'm going to put in here. That's really the key to this. Let's hear what I'm going to do. Number of payments. Do I know that? I do. It's 30 years and it's compounded monthly. So watch out. Watch. It's 30 years times 12 per month. All right, so we'll figure that out. That's actually 360. Interest rate. I know that my annual interest rate is 7.1%. They told us that. Present value. That's actually what I'm interested in. So I want this. I'll put like a square around or something. Like I'll say like, you know, I want this. So I'll leave it blank for now. Payments. I'm not making any payments. So I'll set it equal to zero. Future value. I want this to be worth a million dollars. 
Now payments per year, you might think I'm making none, but remember I said if it doesn't make sense, then make them both the same. So if I'm doing 12 compounding periods per year, then I should probably make that one right there 12. Let's see then if we can actually do this. So let me show you on my lovely calculator here. Come on, there we go. So I'll start a new calculator. I'll go to menu and go to finance. There you go. It's called finance solver. Here it is. What I really like about it is that even if you're not sure, like, you know, what's 30 times 12? Watch, you can do 30. You can say times 12, but don't press enter. Turns out there's a reason why we don't press enter. But press tab. Just goes down. It'll automatically do it for you. So thanks, calculator. Uh, my interest rate is 7.1. All right, fine. My present value, I actually want that, so I'll just skip it for now. Payments are zero. Future value is $1 million. Did I have the right number of zeros? Yeah. Payments per year, I'll make it 12. And compounding periods per year, I'll make it 12. Watch out if you go up and down like this. Do you notice? It doesn't get you up and down these ones, it actually makes it larger, so just be a little bit careful. I just press tab. Payments at the end, they're almost always done at the end. I think in examples, I haven't seen examples yet where they do them at the beginning. I suppose then you'd make it start, but I would just say make it at the end. All right, so how does this thing work? What you have to do, you have to go to the one thing you don't know. So you have to tell it everything else. So we put in everything else, and the thing you don't know, do you notice it says press enter to calculate? So I'm going to go to the entry where I have PV, the present value. Notice I set it at zero. If I press enter right now, it's going to solve for this variable. That's on the TI Inspire. If you're on the TI-84, you have a special solve button somewhere. I think it's in green somewhere. So I'll just press enter here and look what it tells me. Remember, don't worry if it's a negative. Um, remember, look, it's 119 and then 586. So one, one. And I have a bad memory. 119586. There we go. 119586 dollars. Done. This is actually really powerful. So this you can definitely use to actually figure out real things. And like I said, I've got a video coming up where I show you way more interesting things because now we're going to start making payments on things like on cars. We're going to see what happens if you put a down payment on a house or something like that or an investment. So we'll see that it'll be much more useful.